All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's Rainbow Council Virtual Roundtable. My name is Angelique Manette, and I am the Ishkote District Roundtable Commissioner. And my partner in crime is? Hi, I'm Esmeralda Bach, and I am the Assistant Council Commissioner for Roundtable for Wapila Naswan. And I'd like to welcome our newest team member for Roundtable Commissioning, and he is? Steven Schmelzer, how y'all doing? Big round of applause for Steven. Yay, so he's going to be joining us and learning the ropes on how to round table commissioner. We're very excited to have him. So welcome, Steve. And with that, we're going to get started. All right, here we go. We are going to start with our prayer. Oh, no? Yes. Uh, we're going to start with prayer first? Sure. Sure. Okay, let's start with prayer first. Please, wait, wrong paper. Please prepare yourself in the manner you feel most comfortable with. This is a prayer for friends. Prayers for a friend's work. Dear Lord, I commit my friend's work into your hands. Help them rise up and never go backwards in their profession. Let everything they touch at their workplace be a blessing. Block any traps that the devil has set for them. I blind my my bind any spirits of expulsion and dismissal in Jesus' name. Help them reach all the goals that they have set for themselves. Grant them the favor and grace to please and honor their superiors. Let them be promoted and rewarded in their hard work in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. There are pictures from Scout Sunday. Oh, that sorry. Yeah, go ahead. There's pictures from Scout Sunday that were submitted to the council's Facebook page or to me directly. So all these awesome scouts, thank you for participating in Scout Sunday of 2023. And there are more, you just couldn't fit them all. All right, here we go. Please prepare yourself for the pledge, oath and law. Those in uniform, please salute. Those who are not, put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance mm -hmm. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. All right. All right, onward to the info minute with all the information that you love for Rainbow Council. Our first up is training. Uh, so a lot of you are contacting Kevin and saying, it says I'm not trained and you don't know why. Guess what? It's probably hazardous weather. Um, that expires every two years, and if yours is not up to date, uh, then you will be uh, shown as not complete. So uh, make sure that you are letting all the adult volunteers in your unit know that they need to update their hazardous weather training. Uh, as far as training events coming up, we had Trainers Edge. Cub Leader Specific is coming up on Febu February 26th. Uh, IOLS for uh, troop leaders is coming up April 1st through 2nd, Scoutmaster position specific April 2nd, Wilderness First Aid April 14th through 16th, and Baloo April 22nd through 23rd. Next slide. Uh, there is an event called Chautauqua Interpretation Event. It is coming up on February 18th. For those of you that aren't aware, this is a council fundraiser. So I, I don't know that that's been communicated well, but this is a fundraising event for our council and your participation, if you are even a little bit interested, would go uh, be very approved, gratefully approved because it will help Rainbow Council. So this guy is being flown in from across the country to uh, do a Theodore Roosevelt impersonation and he's gonna teach a history about this. So it's out in Kankakee at the Lincoln Cultural Center, which is a really neat Art Deco, um, I believe Art Deco 
theater and the general admission is $20, but it is free for scouts in uniform. However, you still have to register. So if you are even a little interested, consider supporting it. Uh, there is a DEI event coming up and registration for the adult portion has been extended. Uh, there is a special speaker coming in. Jason Ball is coming to talk about Melissa, can you fill me in on the topic? I don't have it here. Yes, he is coming for the 226 event, which is what is DEI and what does it mean for scouting in Illinois? So for those of you who aren't aware of who Jason Ball is, he's from the Chicago area. He serves nationally. He is a public speaker. He does an amazing job uh, presenting this information, and it's going to be a real treat to hear him speak. Yeah, he's a DEI lead for the OA in the area. Um, all right, next slide, please. FOS. So you'll probably have heard of F so FOS. Um, if you're a new leader, you may have heard it talked about, or you may ask someone to have someone asking you to come talk about FOS. Friends of Scouting. FOS pays for basic council and camp operations. We're talking, this is backbone of how council operates. It's donations. Without FOS, Rainbow would have to charge hundreds of dollars per scout at Recharter. So some councils, you know, we, we are charging you the, what, 75 per kid? Um, that is 74 of it, or 75 of it is goes to national. The rest of it, Rainbow, takes $2 and puts it towards insurance. Some councils are charging $200, $300 per scout for the whole year at Recharter to cover instead of doing FOS. So if you would prefer to not see that happen at Rainbow Council, um, it would behoove you to uh, invite the FOS people when they ask to come to your events in February and March and speak to your parents about making donations because some families are very willing to support scouting uh, the council. Uh, it just needs to be asked to make that donation. Um, again, it doesn't take long. It's about 15 minutes of a, of a meeting. It works really well at a blue and gold or a red and green to take 15 minutes out to talk about it. But again, council can't get by without it. So uh, make sure that you're um, considering that when you're planning your events. Next slide, please. The Council Banquet is coming up on the 18th as well. It's at the Renaissance Center in Joliet. This is where different adult volunteer awards will be handed out, but it's open to anyone who's interested in attending. You do need to register online. It is a non-uniformed event, non-uniformed. So we've learned what the code word for non-uniformed is, right? means there are um, perhaps adult beverages available. Uh, so do not wear your uniform. It is a lovely dinner. It is a lot of fun with all your scouting friends. Consider attending. Again, it is a fundraiser for the council and you get to support all your scouting friends. All right. February 23rd is the council annual business meeting. And you may say, oh, well, that sounds like it's not for me, but you would be wrong. It is for you. It is the annual business meeting that is open to everyone to see how the council is running um, and to learn more about how council is operating for the next year. The meeting will be at the New Lenox Village Hall at 7 p.m. Uh, and it is open to everyone in Rainbow Council or even just interested people. Uh, so consider, uh, consider attending that. The Rainbow Council Combined Committee Meeting is coming up. Again, you may say, oh, that doesn't sound like it's for me. Guess what? You're wrong. It is for you. Um, all of the things in Rainbow Council are run by committee committees of volunteers. So everything from program to outdoor to membership to uh, roundtable to commissioners, uh, we all have a committee. And we all get together at these combined committee meetings as of last year. It's brand new. We all meet at the same time and training. Kevin says and training in the chat. Yes, and training. I didn't leave it out on purpose. Um, but we all meet at the same time. We all work on a topic together. We all uh, are working together to get things um, prepared for the year. And it is a great opportunity if you've ever thought about volunteering at the council level. Uh, to come see how each of the different committees run and see what they do and get an idea if you would like to help at one of them. All right, next slide. 
finally, this is new. There hasn't even been a post online about it yet. So you are the first people to hear about it. So congratulations for attending roundtable. Uh, this is the Ra Rainbow Council Key 3 Fireside Chat. So if you'll remember, this is where the Key 3 get together and they take questions from anybody in Rainbow Council. Um, so you can show up to this and ask your questions that you have a burning desire to know about, and they will attempt to answer it. Um, we also will submit a link for you to submit questions in advance um, so that they have time to prepare a really thorough answer. So if you want to make sure that they have ample time to get ready for that, you can submit your question ahead of time, which we will be releasing shortly. Um, this event is going to be at Lewis University. Uh, they are very graciously donating uh, time in their uh, recital hall. So it will be equipped with Wi-Fi. So hopefully, if we play our cards right, we will be able to broadcast it live for everyone to be able to see what's going on there. But please try and attend in person, if at all possible, uh, because we have good discussions when everybody is talking together. All right. All right, our scout lock, scout lock point for the month is loyalty. It says here by Stephen Stallone, still Sylvester Stallone. Sorry, it's not Stephen. Sorry, it could be. You could be a Stallone. Anyways, I learned the real meaning of love. Love is absolute loyalty. People fade, looks fade, but loyalty never fades. Keep that in mind. Our adult award, our adult award this evening is the Cubmaster slash Scoutmaster slash Advisors Key. So they are each a separate award, Cubmaster, Scoutmaster, and Advisor, but they all are very, very similar and they're not is the exact same thing. So we're going to talk about them all at once. Cubmaster and Scoutmaster you may be familiar with. Advisor is Venturing Crew, so that's for the kids that are 14 to 21. Um, but this key is for those people, this award. It has to do a lot with tenure. So for all three of them, your tenure needs to be uh, registered in that position within uh, three years within a five-year period. So if you have like one year and a year off and then you do two more years, that counts. Um, you have completed your training for the position and that you are attending a University of Scouting or at least four round tables. So guess what? You are all one quarter of the way there by attending today's round table for each uh, year of the tenure used for this award. Uh, the other metrics for this one are um, have to do with performance. So you have achieved at least a silver journey to excellence for the last two years in your unit. Uh, you have earned the National Outdoor Challenge Award or its equivalent for each, whichever program you're in, which isn't terribly hard. It just means that you're doing a certain number of outdoor activities every year and you have a certain number of your troop packer crew attending. That you are conducting an annual planning meeting and you have a calendar published, which hopefully you're doing. Um, and that you've participated in at least one additional training at the council or the service territory or the national level. So that could be anything from Wood Batch to Trainer's Edge to Leave No Trace 101, just something in addition to what you've taken for your basic training. So many of you may have qualified for that, don't even know it yet, but you get this very spiffy, ooh ah, spiffy, not. Um, there's also a med medal with um, a little ribbon over there on the left. But um, I've never seen anyone actually wear the ribbon. <laughs> they usually wear the knot. Uh, the fun thing is if you earn this, you can earn this as a Cub Master and a Scout Master and an advisor if you have done all three. Uh, for each time you earn it, you earn a little device, a little pin to put on the, on the knot to signify which one you earn. So awesome. I hope some of you pursue it. Um, and that's what's the uh, adult award. So for the Cub Scout Award, Ez, do you want to handle this or do you want me to handle it? I can take it. Okay. All right. So this one is your cyber chip or to protect yourself adventure. The protect yourself rules are pretty much the things that it's pretty much the first thing that all the Cub Scouts need to know. They that's the very first thing that they all have to that have to do in all ranks. 
Um, these videos replace the, the cyber chip requirements for all levels, tigers, wolf, bears, weevils, and an arrow of light badge for the rank advancement requirements. You do not need to earn the adventure. If you do earn the adventure, you, can com you have completed the rank requirement. Pretty simple, easy peasy. Yes, yeah, so cyber chip is being twilighted. Cyber chip is, uh, BSA is ending their contract with them. So they are phasing that out and that these protect yourself adventures can serve in place of anywhere it says cyber chip. You follow the directions and watch the videos for the right age rank. And then there is a belt loop for the cubs and a pin for the weevils. All right, you want it? Go for it. Okay, this is the Scouts PSA Award is the National Honor Patrol. So the Honor Patrol, I've seen a couple scouts in Rainbow who have it. Um, this is to promote a patrol method and enthusiastic patrol spirit. Uh, some of the requirements for are, you know, very basic things to make sure that you're doing the patrol method in your troop. One of them being like have a patrol name, flag and yell and put your patrol design on your equipment and use your yell. Um, having your two patrol meetings every month uh, and a few more, a few more things which you can read through on. It's a lot of fun, can be very motivated, motivating for your patrols. I have in my troop two uh, patrols going neck and neck, trying to earn it every year um, to make sure. And it's fun because they can earn it over and over again uh, for three month time periods and get the whole ring of the little segments around their patrol patch the whole way around. So a little bit of a little bit of uniform candy for competition um, and helps them be motivated to use the patrol method. All right, membership minute. That's you, Melissa. That's me. So we are excited. Uh, oh, sorry, everybody. I'm Melissa Rubick. I am the council VP of membership. And I am excited to tell you all about our spring promotion. So beginning already January 1st and running through June 5th this year, we are again going to be having our recruit and save promotion. So for any brand new scouts that paid that new scout fee, this is not for transfers or we low transitions. This is brand new scouts to your programs. Every single new scout you bring in, in that during those periods will earn your unit 1% off our Rainbow Council camps for this summer. So that's, that's day camp, resident camp, Weeblo camp, and summer camp. The uh, flyers are here. I'm gonna put the link to the uh, membership resources if you haven't checked that site out. Also, there's lots of great things there, including free flyers and all kinds of things for recruiting and retention. But the flyer for this is out there as well as the form to get submitted to get your money back after you register for camp and you save your 1% for every member of your unit, scouts and leaders. And if you have any questions, I'll put my contact in the chat as well. Thank you, Melissa. Good. All right. Our safety minute is why do we need them? <laughs> why? Because I was told to? I don't know. Here we go. Safety moments are opportunities to reinforce that the safety of scouts and scouters in the Boy Scouts of America is the top priority. A safety moment focuses the unit, volunteers, or staff on safety and how to achieve it. Who can deliver a safety moment? Everyone can deliver safety moments in scouting. Any adult leader, scout, or employee can stay, step up with little preparations to make a safe, S-A-F-E, difference to everyone participating. What makes an excellent safety moment topic? Let's see. Any topic that focuses on improving the safety of scouting. The BSA regularly pu publishes safety moments on a variety of topics. Other topics can include the use of the safe, S-A-F-E, checklist, or the guide to safe scouting. They can be general safety topics on locating a fire extinguisher or knowing evacuation routes. Pick a topic that is relevant to all participants. If you have an accurate information on injuries or incidents during in, incidences during a recent outing, share your experiences. When and where should a safety moment be delivered? Safety moments are best used at the beginning of meetings, all meetings or before a scouting activity. They are essential in activities with a high risk profile like ATV programs or shooting sports. How should the safety moments be delivered? Well, safety moments are on a clear and concise single topic. Optimally, no more than two minutes. 
All safety moments need to be fact-based and age-appropriate for the audience. If you have time, provide a demonstrations of safe practices. So it is now required that all, at all units, any scouting meeting. events, meetings, BSA meeting, anywhere, anything, that a safety what? moment is being presented. So safety moment has been presented to you at round table. And why do we need safety moments? Because safety is essential to everyone. <laughs> our cubs it can be as simple as we are doing a project with scissors today how do we hold scissors that's your safety moment for cubs how do you walk with scissors yeah for a troop it could be like okay scouts what are we doing today we're going on a winter adventure what do we have to remember so that's a great one for a troop for a committee it could be like hey gang did you know that um, your hazardous weather training needs to be updated? This has been your safety moment. So it doesn't have to be complicated, but we should include them in everything we do. We can, we can <laughs> pass off resources all you want. And all you have to do is BSA, safety moments, and it'll all come up. Not a problem. All right. The general topic today is Rainbow Council structure and function. Um, so this is a question that comes up all the time. Like, I don't know who is in charge of what. Who do I contact? I don't even know what district am I, am I in. What's a, how does a commissioner fit in? Who's really in charge? Um, so this is, this is a question, and Chris just, pre just asked in the uh, comments, ask your commissioner, what if you don't know who your commissioner is? So we're going to talk real briefly here about uh, quick and dirty. This is the structure of Rainbow Council and who these people actually are and what are they supposed to be doing. All right, let's go. First things first, we are in National Service Territory 6, okay? People call that NST. So if you look at if you look at the map, we are a weird little conglomerate of everything from the upper peninsula of Michigan all the way down to Springfield and then a tiny little weird hangy doodles off the sides there in the Mississippi. Valley uh, Council. So um, that is, we are National Service Territory 6. That changed a few years ago. But if anyone says NST, that means this whole giant area. All right, next slide, please. Rainbow Council is roughly what you see in the red there. Um, we are those three, uh, three counties. And we, Rainbow Council, are made of two districts. So some councils have like eight districts. Some have one. We have two. Um, the district that's to the north is Wapulanaswa, and it means white buffalo. So if you look behind us, she's got a white buffalo behind her. That is why, because she, she is the white buffalo district. Ishkote serves the southern half of Rainbow Council, and they are, Ishkote means fire, so that's why I have a fire behind me. Um, if you are not sure, Roughly, the easiest way to remember which district you are in is, are you north of 80 or south of 80? That's kind of the dividing line. Um, that's why I put the, the picture there. So if you're a visual person like me, you remember white buffalo is on the top, fire is on the bottom, and 80 is in the middle. All right, next slide. Okay, so I think the easiest way for me to start with this is that there are key threes all the way up and all the way down and all the way out in scouting. Um, so if you think about your unit, and we're gonna use a troop just because that's one that I first pulled up. You've got the troop committee chair, the scout master and the chartered organization rep. And those are the key three. And we've all heard like, okay, key three. I know what a key three is. Um, for a real quick refresher, the troop committee chair is the person who leads the committee and appoints the units, the committee that appoints the unit leaders, ensures the program is delivered in accordance with BSA and the charter orgs policies, and organizes and delegates committee support. So their, their domain is like the background stuff and the committee, right? The scoutmaster is the person who delivers the program to the youth. They're the person who works directly with the youth. They are uh, implementing the program. And then the chartered organizational representative appoints the committee chair, represents the interests of the charter org, and is a voting member of the council. A lot of charter org reps don't understand that that's part of their role. So the three together all lead 
equally. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in uh, the Scouts BSA breakout room this, this evening. But the key thing is, it's a key three. Three people together have different jobs and they all guide the troop. So let's go to the next slide. The council is the same way as a troop. The key three of a council are responsible for ensuring all four of scouting's functions, finance, membership, program, and unit service, are enabling the council to better serve the youth. So no one of these people is in charge more than the other. They are all equally leading the council. There's the scout executive who is responsible for administration, financing, marketing, motivation, recruiting, and staffing of the council. So our scout executive is Ted Carnes. So he, the easy cheat sheet to remember with that is he's got the employees, the people who are paid by BSA. And he implements whatever the council policies and strategic plans are. He's the guy who is making sure that those things get done and has the paid employees to do it. The council commissioner re represents the volunteer body on the national on the council executive board and represents the council to the national committee and supplies unit service to the commissioner team. So right now that's Rich McCulley. So Rich's job is to represent you. He's your representative on the council board. Um, he is also the person who represents Rainbow Council at national meetings. Um, and then Rich's job is also unit service through the commissioner team, meaning when you have questions, when you have things that you need help with, he's the person that you go to or the commissioner team, anyone on the commissioner team is, is your customer service. Um, they're also your motivators. And so that's your commissioner, that's your commissioner team. The third person in this key three is the council president. The council president leads and organizes the council board who are the policy making body and the owners of the strategic plan of the council. So right now that's Jim Solari and their, his job with the council board, like I said, is that policy making body. They decide what we're gonna do with the strategic plan and how we're gonna do it. And then they pass it off to Ted who executes it. And then once it's executed, Rich and his team are the people who are helping to make sure that it's implemented and that everyone in the council feels heard. And then he passes that back up to Jim so that he, the Jim can lead the board based on the influence of the council. All right, that's a lot. Oops. Oh, no, go back. I'm not ready yet. Sorry. <laughs> I hit the button. On so that. each one of these people has a group of people that they oversee and empower to make these things happen in Rainbow Council. Um, so again, it's not any one person in charge, it's a team of people. And that extends down to districts. So you might hear about a district commissioner or a district, uh, a district executive or a um, district uh, training chair, if we had one. Um, but that's a way to make the job into smaller pieces. That's why we're broken into districts so that it's not one huge job for one person. It's broken into the two districts. Um, but the same thing, you'll have a district version that reports to the council version uh, and you'll see the different tabs on the uniforms. Now, the interesting thing is that this goes all the way up to the top, up to the national level. So the national service territories where I just showed you, they will have a national service territory person service territory person in each one of these areas. Same on the national level, there's a national executive board, there's a national commissioner, and there's a national scouting executive, and they all work in the same way. So it goes all the way up to the top, back down to the troop. There's a very similar organization. That helps prevent any one person from um, having all the say. It's kind of like our division uh, in government where we have three different branches and three different branches each have their own unique things that they handle. It's the same thing in scouting. It's so that everyone has to work together a little bit. All right, now I'm ready for the next screen. So the districts, like I was saying, Wapilanasa is north and Ishkote's district is the south. To identify those people, um, Wapi Lanasua's district executive temporarily is Dan, because Dan is actually supposed to be handling both, um, but he's temporarily handling Wapi Lanasua. Chris Pride, who I believe is in this, in the, uh, in this roundtable right now, 
say hi, Chris, is our district commissioner. And our district chair for Wapi Lanasua is Tom Courtney. Uh, for Ishkote, which is the southern half below 80, um, the district executive is Silas Ray. Um, and then our district commissioner is Ryan Berry. And our district chair is Fred. So they each have different jobs and different things. Um, but they're out there to help you. And they all will be very happy to talk to you if you have things. Um, but remember the commissioners are your unit service. So they're your first line of defense. If you don't know who to talk to, um, they're the people you wanna start with that can point you in the right direction. All right, uh, let's go back. And I wanna say, does anyone, go back another one for me, please. Um, does anyone have any questions? Because this is where we can help answer how this all plays out. I'm hoping it clears some things up. No Cricket. We hear crickets. If you think of something or you don't want to ask it, um, <laughs> there's some comments there that are pretty funny. Um, if you don't want to ask it in a group and you just want, because you're just interested, feel free to reach out to one of your roundtable commissioners or any commissioner and we'll, we'll help answer those questions. We, we don't want it to be a mystery how the council is run. You should know it. They represent you and your interests and you own council as much as they do because the only person in this key three who is paid is the scout executive. Everybody else is uh, on in the other two branches are all volunteers. Um, the people who are employed by BSA fall under Ted, but everybody else is just a volunteer, just like you. All right. Barring any other questions, I will continue. So we're ready for our breakouts. All right. Um, stall for time. I will make two rooms. All right. So. Did you guys know that today is National Pizza Day? <laughs> I did not know that. And do not confuse that for National Pie Day, which is a different day. Even though it's a pizza pie, it's not pie day. All right. So I have, thank you. That was excellent stalling. Good job. Um, I have created the breakout rooms in the cub session. We are going to be talking about the difference or the difference between cubs and scouts BSA for cub leaders that are interested in, in uh, moving over to the troop. Um, and then in the scouts BSA room, we are going to be talking about uh, more about the key three of a troop. So feel free to send yourself to that room. And if you need help, I will shove you over there manually. Just give me a shout out right now, but give me a minute because I'll have to get there. Can you repeat the topics one more time? Sure. The cub room is about the transition for the adult volunteer from a cub pack to a troop. The Scouts BSA breakout session is about key three relationships in a troop. Hello and welcome to this month's roundtable. This month, we'll discuss adult roles in scouting, where the adults are the volunteers that mentor and guide the scouts. In addition, adults monitor scouting activities for safety, as well as perform a variety of supporting administrative tasks. In turn, the youth lead the program. Troop adult volunteers, in general, belong to one of two groups, either the committee or the Scoutmaster Corps. The committee, organized by the committee chair, includes roles of treasurer, secretary, advancement coordinator, chaplain, equipment coordinator, training coordinator, and more as needed. The troop committee is a cross between a board of directors and a parent support group. It sets troop policies and handles administrative functions, which allows the Scoutmaster and the assistant Scoutmasters to focus on the Scouts. The committee does things like approve the yearly budget and calendar, arrange transportation and reservation for outings, coordinate recruiting efforts, develop service projects to benefit the community and the charter organization, and serve on the boards of review. You can refer to the Troop Leader Guidebook for further information and descriptions of committee positions. The Troop Committee Guidebook is also an invaluable resource on how the committee is formed and how it works. The term Scoutmaster originates from the early 1900s term of Headmaster, which means simply 
teacher. The Scoutmaster, along with the assistant Scoutmasters, formed the Scoutmaster Corps and worked directly with the youth. The Scoutmasters train and guide youth leaders and are responsible for using the methods of scouting to ensure all youth are having a good experience in the program. A Scoutmaster is not the leader of the troop. The youth are the leaders. The Scoutmaster is a teacher, a guide, and a mentor. The committee and the Scoutmaster Corps work closely together and depend on one another to support the youth leadership and the troops function. It is a full team effort. The final key adult volunteer position is the Charter Organization Representative. The Charter Organization Representative, or COR, is the liaison between the troop and the Charter Organization. The COR helps the committee stay informed about any requests the chartering organization may have for the service projects and meeting dates. The COR approves the yearly charter and any adult volunteer applications. The charter organization representative also has the authority to remove any adult volunteer that they believe is not conducting themselves in accord with the ideals of scouting, the scouter's code of conduct, or the charter's own policies. The committee chair, the scoutmaster, and the charter organization representative together form what is known as the key three. The scoutmaster represents the scoutmaster core, the committee chair represents the committee, and the charter organization representative represents the troops chartering organization. The key three together represent the full troop. All branches of the troop's adult volunteers work together to provide a safe environment for scouts to be mentored in character development, citizenship training, and physical, emotional, and mental fitness. This is no small task, which is why it takes all of the adult volunteers working together in their respective roles to support the youth. Please take some time to discuss the following questions on screen, and thank you for all you do for scouting. Um, I was just saying it would be a lovely chance to everyone who's available and able to who would love to join in a conversation. Um, this is the roundtable portion where we, we talk back and forth. So it's lovely to see your talk with you if you've got some things to, to share. Um, but what I was what I was saying is um, a lot of times conflict arises in a unit because the uh, key three might not necessarily know what their roles are uh, in their unit. Um, and I think it, there's a lot that we can do in our units to make sure everyone knows. Um, so let's brainstorm some ways about how, what do you think we could do to make sure that everyone knows what their, what their intended roles are? I'm talking to a bunch of black squares. <laughs> Would love to hear from some of you. Everyone take their position specific training. Position specific training is an excellent start. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, Becky. All right, so what else? Yes, Brian, just shout it out. If you got just, some. I mean, make sure before you have somebody sign up for a position, explain what they're duties and roles are supposed to be yes yeah how that often way, that way there's no surprises once they join and they go oh i didn't know that yes absolutely because that can be a sign uh, a cause of major conflict right we invite someone they have an idea of what their job is in their head you have an idea of what their job is in your head and they're not matching up right so that's going to cause some problems so yeah that's a great one any other ideas? You could come to round table and learn. <laughs> you could come to round table. You could ask a commissioner to come in and do training with your unit. Um, so one of the things our council training chair will do is come in and teach about function of a unit from a neutral third party. Like this is this is how it's supposed to be set up. And so everyone knows, and sometimes having it come from someone who is not in that conflict will help with that. Anyone else? 
you could show them this video <laughs> or the recording of the roundtable. That might help. Okay. There's Let's... also the books that were pointed out in the video. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Those books, um, do you have a copy of it? Is it current? Because um, they change. You might have one that's been floating around for 20 years, but things change. So maybe consider getting um, a copy of it and distributing it to your um, unit leaders when they join so that they know what's going on. Those are all great ideas. So um, let's talk about how often do you, well, first of all, let's talk about your Scoutmaster or your 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 Scoutmaster core. Um, do you have a Scoutmaster core? Do you have a Scoutmaster core that's like separate from your committee? Because they have different yes. roles. What was that, Wilson? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's a great answer. We love hearing that, right? Sorry, Angela, could you say that again? Do we have a what? Scoutmaster core, a Scoutmaster body. So you have a committee chair and you have a committee, but your Scoutmaster isn't actually part of your committee. Your Scoutmaster is in charge of the Scoutmaster Corps, meaning they're in charge of the Scoutmasters. So all the assistant Scoutmasters, they're separate. So- uh, I've never heard of it that way. That's why I was like, a what? <laughs> yeah, that's why I, you know, I didn't realize that at first either when I was a, a unit leader. But your scoutmaster is actually, um, they have a different function than the committee. And your scoutmasters and assistant scoutmasters form their own body called the scoutmaster corps. And that is separate from the committee because they have different roles. So that is something to consider to make sure that everyone's clear because the roles are slightly different, right? The committee is actually the people who are deciding on the scoutmaster with the, with the, um, the charter orders rep approval, okay? Um, and then the committee has the role of managing things like budget and things like calendars and things. The scale master is the person who's in charge of delivering the program. So they have different roles and they're each core, they're the committee and the scoutmaster core are separate. So are you meeting separately? to do your, your thing? Or are you meeting all together? How are you coordinating between the two? Um, one quick okay. thing we've done, we've had some like major decisions that we've had to make within the troop and the committee actually voted on, um, it wouldn't just be the committee's decision, it would be the parents and all the adults because it was that it benefited the whole troop or affected sure. the whole troop. So the committee made that decision to include everybody. Sure, you can do that. I mean, it's, it's your troop. They got to be clear about how you're going to do it. Yeah. Any other comments about that? I mean, I try to, when I talk with our scout, or the assistant scout masters, I bring any concerns that they have to any of our committee meetings and let the committee, you know, say, oh, okay, we, you know, didn't realize that was going on, but, right. you know, keeping, keeping them separate, but keeping them both in the loop of what's going on, taking yeah. things that we, you know, when I step away to go to a committee meeting and the assistants are there during the troop meeting, bringing the information back to them and saying, hey, this is what the committee's doing and just kind of also being a go-between between the two halves. Absolutely, because it takes everybody to get the job done, right? Everybody's got to communicate well to get the job done and you each have your own areas that you cover. So um, that's a great point. One question I do have is, because we are still a small unit mm -hmm. that sometimes we need, we have to have the ASMs and the Scoutmasters opinions on certain stuff. And oh, it's sure. just the committee's decision to vote on it. Sure. Is, yeah. is there anything, I mean, should it just be the committee or, you know, I'm just kind no. of throwing that out there. As, as absolutely the, the, the committee, absolutely, absolutely hundred percent should take the feedback of the scoutmasters, right? Because you have to work together. 
So on some things, the scoutmasters should have the authority. They deliver the program. So they are delivering and deciding how the program should be run. The committee is deciding on things like these are our basics of what needs to be accomplished in the year. Here's our calendar. Here's our budget. That's their domain, right? But you both have to work together. But the scoutmaster, you know, isn't the one who's supposed to be dictating what's happening in the budget. And the committee isn't supposed to be dictating how the scoutmaster is running the program unless there's a safety or, or concern or like it's not following the program, right? Um, so we've talked about those two a lot. And then the charter org rep is also a very important part of the troop because the charter org rep um, represents your troop to the council and also uh, fulfills the wishes of the charter org. So um, they are the people who say, you know, you are chartered by say the American Legion. So we wanna make sure that you're doing service projects that benefit veterans. Could be as simple as that. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the charter org rep is the person who ultimately decides um, with the charter who is and is not part of the committee or the scoutmaster, right? So if there's someone who um, is not fulfilling, like we said in their in the video, not fulfilling uh, their role, like perhaps there's a safety issue, um, it is the charter org rep who should become involved and say, okay, on behalf of the charter, uh, we are going to remove you from, from this. That's not the committee chair, that's not the scoutmaster, that is the charter org rep job. Um, so there is a whole relationship circle there of inter, inter weaving back and forth between the three that needs to happen. And they all have to happen like really closely held hands. You should be in really good contact if you're a key three with the other two people in your key three. Um, let's see, I'm reading the comments. Are there best practices for coordinating the two entities to maximize benefits for the scouts and parents? Yes, absolutely, 100%. That is, Cassandra, a wonderful question. Um, so at, at the minimum, um, and you can look at the, the journey to excellence, they would like to see, BSA, they meaning BSA would like to see that you are having committee meetings uh, at least, at the very least, every other month. Okay, most of us do every month, but every other month. Um, add to that, your Scoutmaster core should also be meeting, potentially at the same time as the committee meeting or just before or just after. And that they are bringing to the table, you know, the, the conversations that need to happen between the two. So as Brian said, the Scoutmaster can act as the liaison between the two saying, okay, the Scoutmasters have noticed that all of the equipment in the trailer um, is about 10 years past its prime and needs to be replaced. So we are presenting that to you committee. Um, we need new tents. Um, and the committee might say something like, we are working on the calendar for the year to distribute to the parents. Um, Scoutmaster, may we have the uh, dates for the campouts for the next year to put on the calendar from your senior patrol leader. There are some very um, specific, if we think about what our roles are, about how we can make those interactions really well. But part of that is that we have to be communicating really well between the two. Um, does that answer your question, Cassandra? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah. The hey, part Rick, of I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Is it is it incorrect then if we have our scoutmaster core attend the committee meeting simultaneously so we no. can just consolidate it? No, it is absolutely not. Um, okay. But the important thing and where things can get a little hairy is if you choose to do that, everyone needs to understand on the committee and in the scoutmasters that the committee votes on their things and the scoutmasters vote on their things right? The things that they're, so um, the committee can entertain the opinions of the scoutmasters because they're very important, but ultimately it will be the committee's decision um, for something like we're going to increase the budget or decrease the budget. That's the committee's thing to vote on. The scoutmasters, while they can express their opinion, um, don't have a vote. Yes, we do that. Okay. We do segregate that part. Okay. I just wasn't sure 
just yeah. for sake of sanity we, yeah we try to consolidate everybody because we know everyone's very busy so oh um, absolutely okay. no I appreciate that thank you I just want to yeah. make sure I'm like oh no we're doing it wrong no you're doing okay. it great <laughs> um I just think it's really important to communicate that so now is the time of year where you're going to have a lot of crossovers too right so you're going to have new parents new parents you're crossing over from cubs or have never been in scouting before um and you want to set them up to have less conflict in your unit by making sure that it's very clear who handles what all right so part of that can be taking the training but it might even be helpful to just have a list it could be as simple as i'm writing down this list our committee handles this our scoutmaster handles this um, and then giving that to new people who are volunteering in your unit and that can help set expectations so down the road there's less conflict all right now we've talked a lot about like everyone segregated into the roles and their conflict. What can we do to team build between all of the adult volunteers? Takes a team. What can we do to team build? Do low cope. <laughs> low cope. That's a good one. Yeah, low cope is actually a lot of fun. I've done that um, with adult volunteers. You, same thing you would do with the scouts, right? Put them in an activity where they have to work together. What else? You just got to make sure the entire troop's on the same page. Where are we going? What's our final destination? What are we striving for? Because if you have scout masters that want one thing and a committee that has another, you're never going to agree on anything. Yes. Yes. So what can you do to build that relationship? Meetings. <laughs> what about not meetings? What can we do not meetings? <laughs> we actually, we don't have a meeting in December. We just hang out together. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That'll work. What else? We are having a get together this weekend with a, a beverage walk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can absolutely do a beverage walk in your not uniform. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, activities perhaps, and I know we're all really busy, but perhaps maybe once or twice a year, instead of having a regular committee meeting and Scoutmaster core meeting or whatever you do, you consider doing something fun together because if you are building relationships, then you are less likely to be at each other's throats when you disagree on something, right? Because you've built friendships. Um, other simple ideas, scoutmasters, what do you what do you do every meeting ideally with your scouts to get them up and away from sitting? Oh no, we have a bunch of meetings where we're sitting. No, it's games, oh. right? We do outside stuff. Yeah, games, um, team building games. Yeah, it sounds cheesy. Uh, you know, you have a meeting and you want to do a team building game, but when we're in person, what do As and I do? We get you up, we do something, right? Um, it seems funny, it seems goofy, but what do you do? You smile, you laugh, you have a little fun together, you get to know each other. Um, that's perfectly acceptable to spend five meetings of a minute playing a team building game to, to build your team. And it, it could be goofy. It doesn't have to be serious. Um, but in fact, it shouldn't be serious because that's what's going to build those relationships. Yeah. And uh, thinking too, like roundtable, what do we do? A couple times a year, we have the Dutch oven cook-off. And it's fun. And for after we had the New Year's party, the tacos and tats. Why? It's fun. It builds relationships. You get to know people. Think about that for your unit. Um, it's important. We get wrapped up in like, oh, I've got a meeting. I've got a meeting. I got to do the budget. I got to do the agenda. And we got to get this stuff done. And oh my gosh, it's such a slog. Build the relationships and everything will get a lot easier. Anyone have questions or comments on that topic? Okay, so this is my favorite time. This is called Stump Angie with your questions. Um, I will try to answer them to the best of my ability and it could be about anything from unit level to council to national. And if I don't know the answer, I will find it and report back. 
So what are your questions? Maybe easy crowd today. It's more fun when you're challenging for me. I would like to see the slides from that presentation on the like on the key three and the council key three. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see those slides. Is where can I find those? Um, I can share those on. Uh, well, this this whole meeting has been recorded and will be on YouTube. Um, but I can get you the slides. I can post them to the council social media page, and then do you receive the um, email with the roundtable? I'll make sure they go out in the next email to it. But if you want to drop your email in the contacts, I can send it directly to you too as well. Um, Chris says, so do we have no more team building events since the budget was on tacos and tots asking for a friend? Um, so the best part about team building events is that we could do them with very little money because it doesn't take a lot of money to, to, to have fun events, maybe not the tacos and tots, although everyone who came, thank you for your donations. We recovered half of our budget from tacos and tots based on your donations. And so I have half a budget left, which is great. Um, but yeah, tacos are important. So the next meeting, um, I believe should be in person. Uh, we are still trying to settle on a space. So just watch, I'll let you know. That was a comment for anyone who can't see the comments. Anything else? All right, well, thank you so much for coming. Um, and I will see you next month. I'm not sure yet if it's in person or virtual, but hopefully I'll see you next month. Uh, I'll hang out in the main room. If anyone has any questions, just let me know. And Alan has a question or a comment. I actually more of a statement. Okay. A comment. I, yeah. I hit by an email. Some of you might have a scout going to climb through the night tomorrow night. Uh, yes, there is a waiver on the sign up that for the Bollinger Park District. Yes, you need to fill it out. I've been hit by that email twice today. Okay, so it's on the council page. Sorry, just jumping in. I saw some names here where okay. I'm like, same last name as a couple kids that are showing up. So <laughs> all right, just making sure that's out there. Okay. <laughs> See ya. All right. Thanks. Um, otherwise, I'll anything else? Angelique, if yes. you are needing a meeting space for next month, I can uh -huh. offer up our space, but I know Bolingbrook might not be easy for a lot of people. Okay. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. I have to check. We are trying to move. Um, we're trying to do every other month in person, and we're trying to move it equally around council um, because Kankakee gets no love. And, and we rarely have things down there. Um, so we're trying to make a big circuit throughout the year through council. Um, but I will keep that in mind and I appreciate it very much. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tonight. Have a good night. Good night.